Okay, good afternoon, students. Today we are starting a uh, second PUC weekly test to discussion question bi biology and uh, <coughs> botany and zoology questions. Discuss uh, all the questions one by one. Today's topics are uh, sexual reproduction, flowering plants to and uh, reproductive health. There are number of questions here to discuss. First question. The gynoecium represents the first option is female reproductive part of the flower, male reproductive part of the flower, male and female reproductive part of the flower. A fourth option is none of this. Here, first option is female reproductive part of the flower. In flower, we find four parts. These are the sepals, represent the calyx. These are the Petals represent a corolla, and here you find a stamens. So this represent androsium. At the center we find a gynosium. So this gynosium represent female reproductive part of the flower. So gynosium is a female reproductive part. So this is a gynosium. So first option is correct here. Female reproductive part of the flower that is a gynoecium. Coming to the second question, the gynoecium may be monocarpillary, second option bicarpillary, third option uh, both one and two or uh, none of these. Here, if you observe the tears of uh, ovary, in gynoecium we find, we find number of uh, carpels, the number of carpels. The number of carpels varies from one to many. Here in this flower, I drawn two carpels. There are four carpels also, and there may be a three carpels. There may be a five carpels. There may be five carpels. Like that, uh, number of carpels varies. Here they have they given uh, two options here. First option is a monocarpellary that having a single carpel, and second option bicarpellary that having a uh, two carpels. Like that, there are uh, tricarpillary, tetracarpillary, pentacarpillary, as well as uh, polycarpillary ovaries. So here they given uh, both one and two, but here we have option, third option, both monocarpillary as well as bicarpillary ovaries. Like that, we find a number of uh, different carpels here, monocarpillary, bicarpillary, tri, tetra, penta, and more than five is called as a polycarpillary ovary. We find a uh, all structures in different uh, <clears throat> plants of our angiosperms. Then, third question. When there are more than one, the pistils may be fused together or called as. When the number of carpels are more than one, then the pistils may be fused together. Here, the question is, this one ovary. In this, there are two carpels. There are the two carpels. This having a ovals here. And when both, both the carpels are fused, when both the pistils are fused, we call them as a syncarpus. In the same condition, we find uh, some other flowers, we find uh, two carpels, but both the carpels are free from each other. And uh, these are called as a apocarpus ori. Here the question is, when there are more than one oval, or when more than one uh, pistil, the pistils may be fused together called as syncarpus. It's called as a syncarpus ovary. Based on their uh, fusion and based on their uh, free nature, we have uh, two types of ovary here. Syncarpus, where both the carpels of a fistil are uh, fused. And apocarpus, where both the carpels of fistil are free from each other. So here the option is uh, fused. They are asking a uh, fused together. The option is first one, syncarpus ovary. Come to question number four. Each pistil has following parts. Here in a pistil, it is made up of three parts. There are three parts in a pistil. This is called as a stigma. This one is a style. And here it is a ovary. It is a basal bulge portion called as ovary. 
so here stigma is a first portion it is a receptive portion it is meant for a landing of the pollen grain style is a elongated tube through which a pollen tube penetrates and reaches the ovary and ovary is a basal bulged portion it having a number of uh, ovules within this it having number of ovules so these three parts are the parts of the pistil so stigma is correct style correct ovary correct so you can go for fourth option 1 2 3 all three parts are present in a gynoecium next question the stigma serves as a landing platform for as we discussed earlier the surface of stigma is a a surface for the landing of a pollen grains if pollen grains land on the stigma surface they are going to germinate to form a pollen tube if the pollen grains land on the different parts of the flower they can't germinate because stigma provides some uh, water and nutrients for the germination of a pollen grains hence it act as a landing platform for the pollen grains so you can go for a uh, first option here pollen grains second option egg third option insect fourth option bird so correct option is a uh, pollen grains you can go for a uh, first option pollen grains when land on the stigma surface they will germinate question number 6 the number of ovules in an ovary may be one as in case of a uh, wheat paddy and mango or maybe many as in case of a papaya, watermelon, orchids. It is a, both are true here. Here in a ovary, if you draw an ovary, in ovary, there may be a single ovule. There may be a single ovule as in case of a wheat, paddy and mango. As in as our coconut also having a single ovule. And those ovules come into single seeds. But if you dissect the ovary of uh, this uh, papaya, if you dissect a papaya fruit, you can observing a number of uh, you can observing number of uh, seeds in papaya. You find number of seeds. Nothing but what the papaya having many ovules. If you dissect a watermelon, we find a number of seeds. Nothing but what they having many ovules. Orchids also orchids having a large number of uh, thousands of uh, tiny seeds. Means uh, they are made up of tiny ovules. So. In a papaya, watermelon, and orchids, there are many ovules, whereas wheat, paddy, and mango, there is a presence of a single oval. So, here both A and B are correct. So, you can go for a third option, both A and B. Some flowers, some ovaries having a single oval, and some ovaries having a many ovals. So, you can go for third option, both A and B. Question number seven. The process of formation of megaspore from the megaspore mother cell is called as. This is one of the vital process in our gynoecium that occurs. Here, the megaspores. Megaspores are the, uh, what you call as a premature embryo sacs. Further, they convert into embryo sac or female gametophyte. So, these megaspores are formed by the division of one of the megaspore mother cell. Here, this megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis. Undergo meiosis meiosis to form a four megaspores in a tetrad called as a linear tetrad it is called what linear tetrad this question will be asked in a future linear tetrad so out of these four cells of a linear tetrad three cells three megaspores from the micropolar end get degenerates so out of these four, three megaspores get degenerate and only one megaspore, only one megaspore left behind called as a functional megaspore. This entire process is called as a megasporogenesis. This is a functional megaspore. So this is a process of formation of megaspore by the megaspore mother cell. It is called as a megaspore mother cell is called as a megasporogenesis. In the same manner, microsporogenesis also occurs, but in microsporogenesis, all four microspores are fertile or they remain as it is. They are not going to degenerate. But here, out of four megaspores of a tetrad, three megaspores degenerate and only one megaspore uh, remain as a functional megaspore. So, this is a megasporogenesis. You can go for a second option here. So, 
process of formation of megaspores from the megaspore mother cell is called as a megasporogenesis. You can go for second option. Question number eight. A typical angiosperm embryo sac at maturity. After maturation means uh, once the megaspore, uh, functional megaspore is formed, this functional megaspore having a one haploid nucleus. So this haploid nucleus undergo uh, three successful mitotic divisions. Three successful mitotic divisions. So this mitotic divisions results in the formation of uh, uh, seven celled and uh, eight nucleated embryo sac after differentiation of the cells. We'll discuss that diagram here. Here what happens is a functional megaspore. This functional megaspore having a nucleus called as a, a haploid nucleus and this undergo three successful mitotic divisions that form a, this one nucleus get divides into two by the first mitosis. It is a mitosis one. Here the formation of two nuclei, both the nuclei move towards the opposite pole. Later on that, there is occurrence of a mitosis 2 and these two nuclei further divides to form a 4 nuclei. It is called as a 2 nucleated embryo sac. 2 nucleated embryo sac. It is called as a 4 nucleated embryo sac. Further, there is occurrence of a mitosis 3. Mitosis 3 that gives rise to 8 nucleated embryo sac. It gives rise to what? 8 nucleated embryo sac. Further, further, these 8 nuclei undergo differentiation, undergo wall formation to form a completely matured embryo sac it containing a 3 antipodals towards the cell end and one central cell at the center and one egg cell beside two synergids together called as a 7 celled and 8 nucleated embryo sac. Here are 3 cells, here 3 cells and here 1 cell, totally 7 cells are there, 7 cells and uh, here 3 nuclei, here 2 nuclei and here 3 nuclei together called as a 8 nuclei. So, it is a 8 nucleated. This question was asked in a, uh, last uh, CET also. The matured embryo sac having a 7 celled and 8 nuclei. So, here we have a first option 8 nucleated and uh, 7 celled. 7 celled. Here they given different options. These options are not correct here. Only go for first question, oh, sorry, first option 8 nucleated and uh, 7 celled. Question number 9, transfer of pollen grains shed from the anther to the stigma of the pistil is termed as, you know the definition of pollination very well, it is a process of transfer of pollen grain from an anther to the stigma, it is called as a pollination, here also they are giving the same definition, so it is the definition of a pollination, go for first option, pollination, so anthers is nothing but a, a splitting of a anther nothing but anther dehiscence and uh, fertilization fusion of two gametes okay pollination is a uh, not a word here question number 10 depending on the source of pollen pollination can be divided into how many types you may learn the uh, three types of pollination cross pollination which is uh, occurs in uh, most of the uh, plants then uh, self pollination which, uh, which occurs in a uh, some uh, most of the monocotyledonous plants. In between that, we find a uh, one uh, intermediate type of pollination called as a uh, gidenogamy. So we'll write in a sequence. First type of uh, pollination is a uh, autogamy. First one is a autogamy. Second one, gitinogamy. Third one is a xenogamy. So, those are the three types of pollinations. So, you can go for the third option that is a 
three types of pollinations are there based on the sources of a pollen. Here in autogamy, same flower provide a pollen grains. In gitnogamy, uh, one more flower of the same plant gives a pollen grains. In xenogamy, another plant of the same species uh, will provide a pollen grains. So we have three types of pollinations, autogamy, gitnogamy and uh, genogamy. So you can go for third option. In 11th question, transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. When a pollination occurs within a flower, if it, these are the anthers and here is the surface of a stigma and gynosium. Here pollination occurs from this anthers to the stigma of a same flower. So it is called as a autogamy, nothing but a self pollination. Here we have two types of flowers in a self pollination called as a chasmogamous flowers and a clistogamous flowers. These are uh, going to proceed a uh, self pollination. So here we can uh, go for a first option. It is a uh, autogamy transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a uh, same flower is called as a uh, autogamy. Question number 12. Transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant okay within a same plant within a same plant there are uh, two flowers take an example of uh, this uh, maize in a maize we find a uh, male flowers here and a female flower here this is a female flower so pollen grains are transferring from this male flower to the female flower so one flower to another flower in case of a uh, Maize, this uh, happens. So, maize plants are the monocot plants, and here we find a uh, uh, what do you call as a monoecious plants, bisexual plants. Here, uh, male flowers are different, and female flowers are different. So, pollen grains transferring from the male flower to the female flower, but uh, both are flowers are present within a single plant. So, this is called as a, a second type of pollination called as a gitanogamy. Gitanogamy is the option for this. Uh, transfer of pollen grains from an anther to stigma of a, another flower of the same plant. So you can go for a second option for this uh, uh, one, one type of uh, self and cross pollination. That uh, previous one is, uh, this is an intermediate type of the pollination. Here it resembles the autogamy. How it resembles autogamy? The genome of a male flower and genome of a female flower is uh, similar. So, genetically, this type of pollination resembles autogamy. But uh, when you observe the type of pollination, here pollen grains are transferring from male flower to female flower with the help of the pollinating agents. So, we call this one as a, a genogamy also, cross pollination. So, functionally, it resembles genogamy. Genetically, it resembles autogamy. So, second option. Here, Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a different plant. So, different plant is uh, our uh, genogamy, no doubt here. Third option, transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a different flower of the different plant of the same species. So, third option, genogamy. Syngamy, as you know, syngamy is a fusion of uh, two gametes, nothing but the fertilization. Question number 14. Pollination by water is quite rare in a flowering plants and is uh, limited to about uh, how many genera? In a, as our NCERT book, there are most of the monocots uh, belongs to 30 genera. Belongs to 30 genera will proceed uh, water pollination. Water pollination also called as a uh, hydrophily and this occurs in uh, about uh, rare number of plants, about uh, 30 genera, belongs to 30 genera. And there are some aquatic plants which also uh, depends on the wind and insect. The, they are the aquatic plants, they living in water bodies, but depends on the wind and insect. So those are some examples given in our book are uh, our uh, water hyacinth, water hyacinth and uh, water lily, water lily. These are the aquatic plants. Being aquatic plant, they won't proceed a uh, water pollination. And uh, for water pollination, we have so many examples here. Examples like uh, Valisneria. Valisneria. Jostera. 
then uh, hydrilla these examples can be taken for the water pollination and these are the aquatic plants do not proceed a uh, water pollination so these like questions will be asked in our uh, neat exam so question number 14 first option question number 15 flowers are large colorful fragrant and rich in nectar in case of here there are uh, different uh, floral rewards to attract uh, insects or pollinating agents some flowers may be are edible pollen grains some flowers may be a uh, fragrance they be a uh, nectar they be are the some useful uh, aspects in their flowers for example uh, they provide a safe place to lay the eggs for the insects we have some uh, symbiotic association between the insects and uh, pollinating plants so here flowers provide flowers are large means uh, they are uh, conspicuous and they are colorful also they liberate a fragrance and also rich in nectar and also some uh, other characters are uh, rich in edible pollen grains also. So these are meant for what? Uh, insect pollination. These are meant for what? Attraction of uh, insects. So to attract insect, usually insect uh, visit a flower to have say, their food, to have some shelter. But here flowers will provide everything. So that way insect visit the flowers and automatically they proceed a uh, pollination also. So you can go for a second option in this uh, 15th question. Question number 16, many insects may consume pollen or the nectar without bringing about pollination. Such a floral visitors are referred to as, a, they are called as a pollen robbers, friends here, pollen robbers. Here, most of the insects and some animals also, they feed on the pollen grain, they consume the pollen grain, but do not involve into pollination process, especially uh, some ants. Ants uh, also prefer pollination, but in most of the seasons, they will uh, feed on the nectar of uh, nectar of the flowers. Some uh, uh, insects feed on the pollen grains of the flowers and uh, fly away. They do not involve into pollination. So those are called as uh, pollen robbers. You can go for the third option, pollen robbers. Question number 17. The most common type of hemorrhoidacy is the most common type of hemorrhoidacy is a, we can go for the first option. Polygonum type is a most common type. We find the most of the angiosperms uh, follow this uh, polygonum type. And we can say the hemorrhoidacy formation is a monosporic and a polygonum type. In most of the exams, they asked this uh, question. We have to be careful about this question. Polygonum type of hemorrhoidacy uh, along with uh, we will ask a monosporic type of the embryo sac, monosporic development of the embryo sac. Then embryo sac of flowering plants develops from, how, di how this uh, embryo sac is formed? As we discussed previously, there is a formation of a functional megaspore, formation of a functional megaspore. And this functional megaspore undergo three successful mitotic divisions. And that uh, results into formation of a, a matured female gametophyte, also called as embryo sac so you can go for the second option as you know zygote give rise to what embryo zygote when it divides mitotic it give rise to embryo and if you observe the nucleus some cells of the nucleus are uh, uh, rich in nutrients so they provide uh, nutrients for developing embryo sac and uh, embryo is remain as it is embryo in the seed embryo present in a seed so you can go for second option, megaspores. Megaspores give rise to embryo sac in a flowering plants. Question number 19, pollination performed by the bat is called as, here uh, the so many terms are there for the indicating uh, agents of pollination, not given in our book, but uh, we should uh, know about all these uh, terms. Here we have a myrmecopily is uh, for the pollination by the ants. Then we have a ornithophily here, pollination by the birds. Birds pollination is called ornithophily. Entomophily, pollination by the insects. Insect pollination is called as a entomophily. And this is a cheropterophily. Cheropterophily is a bat pollination. Along with this, uh, we should also uh, know that some terms like uh, anemophily. Anemophily is a 
विंड पॉलिनेशन हाइड्रोफिली हाइड्रोफिली इज अ वाटर पॉलिनेशन बोथ आर दॉडी पॉलिटिंग एजेंट्स देन हियर वी हैव अ जूफिली बट एनिमल पॉलिनेशन एंड हियर वी हैव अ एंटोमोफिल इंसेक्ट पॉलिनेशन चेरोपटेरोफिली बैड पॉलिनेशन एंड मिर्मिकोफिली एंड पॉलिनेशन ऑर्नेथोफिली बर्ड्स पॉलिनेशन वी हैव अ वन मोर क्वेश्चन दैट इज अ मेलेकोफिली मेलेकोफिली इज अ स्नेल पॉलिनेशन पॉलिनेशन अकस्पाइ Snails is called as a malacophily. Now, in this uh, pollination performed by the bats is called as what? Uh, bat pollination. So that is a chiropterophily. We can go for the second option. Along with that, we should uh, remember all these uh, terms. Question number twenty. Cross pollination produces. Cross pollination produces similar offspring. weaker progeny better progeny and uh, male progeny usually as you know sexual reproduction is better than the asexual reproduction in sexual reproduction the flowers are formed and there are uh, there is the involvement of uh, two gametes and these two gametes of the same flower means uh, there is a self pollination again in the these two gametes which are coming from different flowers is called as a cross pollination here out of this self pollination cross pollination cross pollination is a better mode of pollination as we have a better mode of reproduction sexual reproduction in same manner again a cross pollination is a better mode of a pollination because because of cross pollination there is a entry of a gametes from other plants of the same species and the genome of that species is different and the genome of this species is, uh, this plant is different so different genomes will fuse together to form a zygote that gives a a uh, better offspring that offspring shows the variations that variation you know all into evolution of that uh, plant means uh, that produce a uh, better progeny you, here you can go for the third option they produces a uh, better progeny so these progenies are able to show the variation and this variation evolve into evolution of uh, that particular species if a uh, self pollination occurs continuously that causes a uh, in breeding depression there is the formation of a uh, small flowers formation of a uh, what you call as a less sealed then a stunted growth of the plant and these plants are very much uh, vulnerable to diseases that why uh, cross pollination is uh, better than self pollination so here cross pollination produces better progeny than the self pollination you can go for the third option 21 meiosis of megaspore mother cell generally produces when meiosis occurs in a megaspore mother cell as we discussed earlier the process occurs is a megasporogenesis then first of all this is a megaspore mother cell it having a diploid nucleus when this uh, megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis that give rise to a tetrad the tetrad formed is a such a tetrad in which uh, cells are arranged one above the other in this cells are arranged one above the other so this type of tetrad is called as a linear tetrad is called what linear tetrad in a microsporogenesis whatever the tetrad formed is a tetrahedral tetrad remember that also it is a tetrahedral tetrad here we find a one cell front side and three cells at either sides they form a four angle structure called as a tetrahedral tetrad that occurs in a microsporogenesis But in this megasporogenesis, when a megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis, that produces a, a linear tetrad. Here we can go for the uh, first option, linear tetrad. Again, there is the formation of a decussate tetrad in a, some rare number of species, and also isobilateral tetrad in a monocord species. Question number twenty-two: Repeated self pollination over the generations produces. We will discuss it in a. previous question when there is a repeated self pollination occurs self pollination occurs generation to generation the upcoming offspring will be of a uh, suffering from uh, in bedding depression and those will be of uh, 
weak progeny they produce what weak progeny weak uh, in terms of uh, small flowers stunted growth and uh, less yield and they are more uh, vulnerable to diseases they are more easily attacked by the diseases okay that like uh, plants are developed because of uh, uh, continuous self pollination and here we can go for fourth option uh, they produce weak progeny so new varieties better progeny and uh, elimination of weak traits these are the characters of a uh, cross pollination because of cross pollination we can proceed with it but because of self pollination weak progeny are formed we can go for the fourth option for question number 22 weak progeny 23 pollination with help of snails is called as as i discussed uh, in previous question and given so many words here pollination occurs by the snails is a uh, malacophily as discussed previously malacophily here myrmecophily again uh, ant pollination ant pollination is myrmecophily leptopterophily means uh, there are some uh, subclasses of insecta leptopterans coleopterans and dipterans out of that uh, some insects are specially called as leptopterans they are the uh, bird worms and uh, army worms we have some uh, worms like insects are there so these are belongs to leptopterans that why leptopterophily that is a insect type of insect main insect pollination is the endomophily in that insect uh, there are uh, some muscle classes leptopterophily then entomophily is a uh, insect insect pollination endomophily and type of insects are the leptopterans is called as a lepidopterophily remember then here we can uh, we can mark second option malacophily 24 intraspecific incompatibility can be overcome by you know in a uh, outbreeding devices concept it is here we have a self incompatibility the stigma of the flower avoid the germination of a pollen grains of a same species pollen grains of the same species will be avoided by the uh, surface of a stigma it's called as a self incompatibility also called as a self sterility and this is meant for uh, preventing a uh, self pollination but how to overcome this we can overcome by the uh, fourth option they, here they given is a uh, intra ovarian pollination intra ovarian pollination means uh, here we are going to going to add the germinating pollen and it is occurs in the in vitro not uh, possible naturally in a small portion of this ovary and here we introduce uh, the pollen tube of the pollen grain everything occurs in vitro and this pollen tube may enter the embryo sac that uh, release the male gametes so it is called the intra ovarian pollination here we pollinate the ovary directly without using a stigma because stigma is going to avoid a self uh, pollination means a uh, that avoiding a uh, pollen grains of the same flower that time we'll proceed a uh, intra ovarian pollination where we inject uh, germinated pollen grains inside the ovary directly by puncturing it is a uh, intra ovarian pollination you can go for the fourth option 25 the stalk of the ovil the stalk of the ovil is pedicel peduncle petiole raciole here stalk of the ovule if you draw on the ovule we are going to draw on the anatropous ovule here inside this we find a embryo sac and here we find a micropyle region and this is a stalk this is called as stalk of the ovule this portion is a stalk of the ovule stalk of the ovule so this is called as a funiculus and here you find a hilum and here you find a raphe 
is a enlarged bullet portion that uh, continue the hilum on the integument is called as a uh, raphe and here we have a pedicel peduncle petiole and uh, rachiole stock of the ovule is called as a funiculus you can go for the second option funicle it is a funicle then question number 26 genogamy is a uh, autogamy cross pollination self pollination and uh, cleistogamy genogamy as you know there is a one more term for the cross pollination it is a one more term of the cross pollination called as a genogamy you can go for the second option very easy question it is 27 a characteristic of a wind pollinated flowers is wind pollinated flowers you know there are so many characters of a wind pollinating flowers this question was asked for two marks in the theory also and uh, most of the neat uh, patterns will ask this question about uh, wind pollinating flowers here we should know about a uh, pollen grains Pollen grains are light weighted and non sticky. Stigma is feathery and well exposed. Stamens are well exposed to the current of wind so that wind may carry the pollen grains from those uh, uh, stamens. And here we have an option feathery exotic stigma. First option feathery exotic stigma is a correct option for this wind pollinating flowers. Again, there are a number of characters, each ovary having a single ovule. And here the flowers are small, inconspicuous, and they are uh, clustered to form a uh, inflorescence. So, like that, some uh, characters will uh, carry the pollination with help of uh, wind. Here we can go for the first option feathery and uh, exerted stigma for question number 27. 28 in embryo sac, n, 2n, 3n conditions are found respectively in. Here I will give a list of uh, some. Uh, Haploid cells, diploid cells, and triploid cells. You can uh, uh, write this. Here we find antipodals. Antipodals. Synergids. Egg. Male gamete. Microspore, Megaspore, Megaspore, then uh, cells of a tetrad, cells of tetrad, then uh, vegetative cell, Visitative cell, generative cell, generative cell. So, these are the list of cells which are haploid. Antipodal is haploid, synergid is haploid, egg is haploid, male gametes, two male gametes of a pollen grain haploid, microspores haploid, means pollen grain is also haploid, megaspores haploid, megaspores haploid. Cells of a tetrad. In tetrad, there are four cells. Each cell is also haploid. Vestidive cells present in a pollen grain haploid. Generative cell in a pollen grain also haploid. Okay, here uh, these are the haploid structures. And uh, some cells called as a nucellus. Secondary nucleus. This is a secondary nucleus is formed by the fusion of a uh, Polar nuclei also deployed. Embryo is deployed. Zygote is deployed. Then uh, layers, layers of anther also deployed. Sporogenous tissue, sporogenous tissue present in anther also deployed. Megaspore mother cell deployed, pollen mother cell deployed. The special cells, all these are the deployed cells. Even though myocytes you have learned in the first topic are also deployed cells. These are the deployed and these are the haploid.
then here I will write a list of uh, triploid cells. Aileron layer. Aileron layer, a layer present between the endosperm and seed coat of monocot seeds. Aileron layer is a triploid. Endosperm triploid. Endosperm of angiosperm is a triploid. It's also 3N. And uh, PEN is a triploid. PEN is a triploid. And uh, PEC also triploid. Primary endosperm cell, primary endosperm nucleus, endosperm, aileron layer. All are the triploid cells. All are the triploid cells. You have this list very, very important in the upcoming exams also. So this is a list of the haploid cells, list of diploid cells, and uh, this is a list of uh, triploid cells. Here the option is a uh, antipodal haploid, zygote diploid, endosperm triploid. You can go for the third option. Entomophily is pollination by. Entomophily is a pollination by what? Insects. What we discussed earlier. You can go for first option. Insects. Then chalazal end is a Opposite to micropolar end, in the oval, we find the two ends. So here we find a micropolar end, and this is called as a chalagel end. So here it is opposite to the micropolar end. Here we find a region called as chalaja through which I integument sarages. So it is a chalaja. The end is opposite to the micropolar end. So that is a, a first option here, opposite to the micropolar end. Next question number 31. The point at which funiculus touches the oval is called as. In the oval, we find one uh, point of attachment of funicle. This region is called as a hilum. It is a hilum, nothing but a point of attachment of the funicle with the oval. So this point is called as a hilum. Here we can go for the uh, second option. The point at which funiculus touches the oval is a hilum. 32. Which one of the following pairs of plants structures has haploid number of chromosomes? Haploid number of chromosomes. Megasperm mother cell diploid, antipodal haploid, leave it. Egg cell and antipodal. So here you can go for second option. As a list uh, we given previous question. So egg cell and antipodal are the haploid structure. Asking haploid structures means uh, having a n number of chromosomes. Single set of chromosomes is called as haploid. Two sets of chromosome, diploid. Three sets of chromosome, triploid. Here, these are two cells having a single set of chromosome. That was they are haploid. You can go for the second option. 33. Egg apparatus consists of. So, in the embryo sac, there is a presence of a egg apparatus towards the micropolar end. So, this together called egg apparatus. It containing a one egg cell and a Two synergids, two synergids. This together called as a egg apparatus. Egg apparatus. So you can go for the uh, option uh, third. One egg cell and two synergids are the uh, components of a egg apparatus. So you can go for the third option. Thirty-four. Oval is oval is a megasporangium. Megasporophyll, integumented megasporangium, rolled megasporangium. Here we go for the third option. First option also correct, but uh, integumented 